The second scripture comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 15. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me, they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to him? Them. God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Please pray with me before I offer my message. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. This week at VBS, we ministered to 44 children. As you saw in the video, our Bible Adventures time was spent learning about the life of Moses. Through interactive lessons, we experienced Moses being placed in a basket in the Nile, the burning bush, the plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, food from heaven, and the Ten Commandments. Today, I've chosen the scriptures relating to Moses' call at the burning bush. One of our goals in the children's ministry is to help children to learn to say yes when God calls, as well as assisting them on their journey to saying yes to God. I'm 99.9% sure our calls are not going to come in the form of a burning bush. There are many accounts of biblical characters in the Bible who have vastly different calls. But of all the calls from God in the Bible, it's Moses and that burning bush that's the most well-known. Moses definitely had a dramatic and gripping call. How could there be any question in his mind that God was calling him? God confronts Moses and gets his attention with the bush. Moses heard his name and actually responded, here I am. But then God commissions Moses saying, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. You might expect Moses to give the response similar to Isaiah. Here I am, send me but he doesn't. Moses asked, who am I to do this? His first excuse, as you heard, was, I am a nobody. Was he unqualified? The answer actually might have been yes. From a human point of view, he's not likely to, he's not a likely prospect to go head to head with Pharaoh. After all, he was nearly 80 years old, he had killed a man, and he didn't have the best reputation out there. If you were picking candidates to lead God's people out of Egypt, Moses might not have been at the top of your list. But God, God has an answer. God's response is summed up in five words. I will be with you. That's the bottom line. Moses' second excuse was that he didn't have an answer concerning whose authority he had. God was asking Moses to be his vessel to be his voice to save the Israelites from the tyranny of Egyptian leadership. Moses' excuse didn't fly. God knew the people would ask Moses that question, so he prepared him with an answer. I am has sent me to you. That simple phrase contains an essential truth about who God is. He's the God of the universe. He always has, he always is, 
and he always will be. Moses didn't need to know it all because it wasn't about him. It was about God. In other words, don't worry about the future. God has a plan that will cover all of our details. Moses' third excuse to God comes when Moses asks, what if they don't believe me or listen to me? Moses was convinced none of the leaders in Israel would believe him. Being vulnerable is scary, especially to a potentially hostile group. God didn't let Moses hide behind his natural human fear. God gave Moses three miraculous tools to give him the confidence he needed. A rod that could turn into a serpent, the ability to turn his hand leprous and then make it whole again by simply placing it in his cloak, and the ability to take water from the Nile and place it on the ground where it became blood. God did not dismiss this excuse from Moses. He equipped Moses to overcome it. Moses' fourth excuse was, I'm slow of speech and tongue. Moses claimed he was not a good speaker and had problems talking. But then, listen to God's response. Who gave human beings their mouth? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. God promises to give Moses whatever he needs in spite of his weakness. All Moses has to do is go and speak to Pharaoh. The rest is up to God. God doesn't call the flawless to do his work. He takes the humble and works his flawless plan through our cracked and broken vessels. Moses' fifth and final excuse was that he was simply unqualified for the task. He becomes desperate, and he says, please, God, anyone but me. At last, we get to the heart of the problem. God has called Moses, and he doesn't want to do it. God responds to this excuse in anger. No wonder God got angry. He had asked five times. Moses says yes and is told he can take his brother Aaron to talk for him. Final excuse abated. When Moses finishes his excuses, he shows amazing single-mindedness. While he's slow to accept the call and the appointed work, he holds fast to it and gets the job done. God works with each of us where we are and takes us to where he wants us to be. We just need to be willing to leave behind the excuses. Moses' call came in the form of a burning bush. I believe there are burning bushes in all of our lives, throughout our lives. The question is not whether there is a burning bush in our life, but whether we turn aside or respond to the call being made to us. Burning bushes are those circumstances or events that interrupt our life and they grab our attention. They're not part of our plan. They take us by surprise. They stop us in our tracks. They are events, conversations, and words, happenings that are unplanned, unexpected, unforeseeable, and they always ask something of us, a response. They are those times that leave us weeping and ask, why, God? They are those times when we can't wait to share with someone what has happened, and we say, not in my wildest dream would I have ever expected that. They are those times we shake our head in disbelief and say, no, that's not possible. It can't be. And sometimes we throw up our hands and say, God only knows. I'm sure you can think of many times this has happened in your life. Some of Moses' feelings and concerns are similar to those you may have experienced when first asked to teach or lead. God's call to you may not be as flashy as the bush, but God's invitation to you and God's promise to support you are just as strong as they were in biblical times. Like Moses, a first reaction to a call or invitation may be reluctance or fear. That's normal. When God gives us a task, it can seem overwhelming and we may feel ill-equipped. Throughout my time here at San Carlos, I've had many calls to take on new things, but they were always on my terms and done with complete willingness. I led the children's choirs as a young adult. I was a youth intern one summer. I played in the bell choir. I sang in many different choirs. Then in the summer of 2008, Kim Ports approached me and asked if I would help with VBS. That's when my excuses started. I said, I have a two-year-old, and she said, we'll get someone to watch Emma. 
I said, I teach all year long, and this is my vacation time. And she said, just come and, and sing a couple songs. It'll be fun. Excuses abated. The next year, I was the co-director of VBS <laughs> with Kim. And then the following 11 years, I co-led VBS here at San Carlos with both Kim and Diane. During COVID, I felt called to do something for the kids during the pandemic, again, on my terms, and I was eager to move forward. However, I was feeling very overwhelmed and ill-equipped when my call to the ministry came. This call was different. It came on the Monday after VBS in 2022. I had just completed leading our first in-person VBS after COVID with a new pastor by my side. I was making coffee in my kitchen while reflecting on the amazing week I had just had with all the children and the volunteers. I had the oddest feeling that I can't even fully describe, but this urge to do more. I had only been in this position less than a year, and with all the pandemic restrictions, I was not feeling like I was completely equipped with everything I needed to be the children's director. Yes, I could make videos for Sunday school and do staff meetings on Zoom, but build a children's program from the ground up for our church with a brand new pastor I didn't know well, that was a big ask. Just like Moses, I was questioning whether I was the right person. As my coffee was brewing, I grabbed a Splenda packet out of the container on the counter. Now this particular box of packets had little sayings on them, and I usually didn't pay too much attention to what the sayings were. But that day, the first one I pulled out said, replace I wish with I will. I immediately thought, no God, not right here in the kitchen, and I promptly threw it back into the container with the other packets. If I just ignored it, it would go away. Then I chose another packet and it said, yes, you can. <laughs> this was getting scary. Someone was urging me to do something. The voice was getting louder. Once again, I said no, and I threw it back in with the others. I chose a third and final packet. This one read, the perfect time is now. <laughs> At that point, I threw up my hands and said, okay, God, you win. I knew what he was calling to me, me to do. And to this day, I carry my Splenda, you can see how wonky they are, I carry my Splenda packets with me to remind me of this sign. The previous day, our final hymn was, Here I Am, Lord, and thoughts were already spinning in through my head. God was sending me signs. At least I only needed three asks from God, not five. God assured Moses that he, was sufficient, that he was sufficient and that would help would arrive when needed. Like Moses, we can be assured that God will use whatever skills we have and that we will find the help we need to be an impactful teacher or leader. That help did arrive. Pastor James had told me upon arrival the first day of July, he was all in for VBS. My initial thought was, how much time can this guy devote to our children? He has a church to run, people to meet, and he's brand new. But when he said he was all in, he really meant all in. He not only led a crew of boys that year, but fully let go to dance, sing, truly interact, and minister to our children. I could tell that he enjoyed every minute of VBS. This was different. Through that week, he began mentoring me. I specifically remember one suggestion he gave. Every day at VBS, we have a new Bible verse. I was accustomed to just showing the kids the Bible and reading the verse from the screen. And he said, read to the children from the Bible. They need to see you physically using the Bible. It was a tiny little tweak, but is one that I have held on to as to the importance of children hearing right from the Bible, the verse, versus telling them the story. James and I meet weekly to discuss the children's programming, the youth programming, and plan the children's message. During these meetings, James equips me with the tools I need to be successful in my job. I actually look forward to this meeting every week. Most weeks, we have pretty deep theological conversations. These conversations help me make sense of the biblical passages that further allow me to help the children make sense of them. These conversations also keep me grounded in why the Bible stories matter and how to bring the importance of the stories to our modern day world. God had sent me the help I needed in a pastor that cares so much about Christian education for all ages. 
I have amazing colleagues that I work with every day here at the church whom I gladly call my friends. I have incredible volunteers that jump whenever I need something. I now have 19 volunteers who have answered their call to work with our children on Sunday mornings during Sunday school. We have gone from our little one-room schoolhouse to four different aged classrooms every Sunday. Each quarter, I send out an email asking for people to sign up for the next few Sundays to teach. On any given Sunday, I need eight helpers, two for each room. Without fail, each time I send out that email, all of the teaching slots are filled within 48 hours. We're talking about over 100 slots. That, my friends, is God sending me the help I need. In January of this year, James and I decided to move to a lectionary-based curriculum for the children. The lectionary is a schedule of scriptures that many churches choose to follow. This new curriculum allows everyone in the church access to study the same text each week. This includes our babies and toddlers in the nursery, our preschoolers under the direction of Nan Stengel, our two elementary groups, and you as the congregation. I challenge you to talk to some of our children about the Bible passages and our liturgical colors and seasons of the church year. You might be very surprised to see what you hear or to hear. I love what I do, and I'm passionate about Christian education. There are still days I doubt myself, but I'm so fortunate to have a team sent to me by God that I can call upon for help. I know that God is in control and his plans are good. I have spent the past few months in prayer and meditation seeking God's guidance and wisdom and have spent time asking God to discern my calling. I am certain God has much more in store for me here with our children, youth, and families at San Carlos. That is why next week I'll be taking a leap of faith and resigning from the school district after 28 years of service to become the full-time director of children, youth, and family ministries here. No more excuses. I'm sure that I, there will be times I need more guidance. There will be times I question what God really wants me to do. I know there will be times that I wonder if I'm doing it right. But how did Moses know if he got it right? He didn't. He didn't know any more than we do. There will, however, be a sign. The sign, God says, will come after the people have been delivered, not before. Does that mean we won't always know why in the moment and be able to look back and say, God was there? We live life moving forward, uncertain and not always knowing all the answers. But we only begin to understand and make sense of it in retrospect. What if there are no guarantees and the best we can do is respond, hoping, loving, and faithing our way forward? What if that's how we approached every burning bush in our life? And what if we saw every common bush of fire with God?